Folks, what's going on? Arm and Hammer here. The following is an interview I had with the one and only Matt O'Keefe. O'Keefe is, I mean, what isn't he in the CrossFit space? Honestly, he's involved in running some of the biggest events outside of the CrossFit games. He manages some of the biggest athletes inside of the space. He is involved with some of the biggest brands as well in the space. I mean, he's basically the who's who. He knows everybody. He's got his finger on the pulse of what's going on. And he was the plus one for one Matt Fraser at the 2020 CrossFit Games. So we talked a little bit about what the games were like, the environment there, sort of what sort of benefits there were for the intimacy. I asked him if it was his fault whether or not that deadlift went Matt's way. So it definitely had a lot of fun talking about the games there. We also talked a lot about the future of live events in this very strange, uncertain COVID world that we're in right now, what they're trying to do with Wadapalooza, the trials, a few other things, um, and maybe even just speculated about what the 2021 CrossFit game season will look like. I think you guys will enjoy the conversation for sure. Let me know what you think. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Chief Keefe. O'Keefe, the man. What's up, man? Listen, I'm I'm trying to bring my background game up like close it, to yours. It it's looks great. No, I mean, you have you have like you have like really powerful photos. They're black and white, so you know they're artsy. You know, it's good. It's 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 I mean, strong. It's just Matt and and Katrin Edson entering the stadium for their last workout for their wins in 2016. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever, no big deal yeah. or anything. I mean, yeah. Uh, What's up with you, dude? I'm doing I'm doing good. I can't complain. You know, it's been it's been a nice couple of weeks since the games were wrapped up. Uh, actually, trying for I, I've had a chance to relax. I've had a chance to sort of shut down for a few days, which has been nice. Um, I feel like you've been pretty busy. Mostly, I feel like honestly, I this is the one question I wanted to ask: Was the deadlift your fault or Matt's fault? Ah, oh, you know what's funny? <laughs> this is awesome. I was like, when I when that went down, I'm like, the one man that will dig in on this will be Armin because he's like well, really watching this. No, um, so listen, like to take that like ten thousand foot. I mean, any situation like that where you in, insert a coach, that's a coach's fault. So I take full responsibility for it. It was just some, it was chaos and miscommunication in the moment. Yes, did we have the number right? 100%. Um, the loading became a little bit of an issue. And then um, I recognized it and yelled over and then realized really quickly that I'm going to affect his performance because of knowing Matt really well. He kind of, If you watch the video back, he waved me off. Um, like, and that's Matt and I's way, Matt's way of telling me to, you know, shut the, you know what up. Like, he was just kind of like, I, like too much. And um and so, yeah, the heat of the moment, it was hard. It's really funny. I was talking to some people about this last night. It was so cool. Um, but we had it, right? It's just like the chaos of the moment. It's one of the, one of the funny things, like, I'm, I've reflected back to, like, be better in that moment next time. A, more assertive. And B, what could I have given him for info that would have helped? Because the, the, the command was, like, add 26 pounds to win, add 25 to tie. And then, um, you know, Basically, what I thought is, well, maybe if I told him, like, make it 543 or whatever. But he even said after, he's like, if you had told me that, my brain would have fallen out of my ears because I've never, like, really loaded that type of weight. He's like, I'll, he's like a visual guy where he'll be like, he can see plates and know what's on the bar. Mm -hmm. He's like, I would have been all over the place anyway. Um, but I told him, too, when he came out, I'm like, I feel so poorly about this. He's like, what do you care? Like, he's like, why? why? He's like, you did a great job. It's just a hot moment. I was like half listening. There was a lot going on and I PR'd my three lips. And I was like, yeah, man, but it was like the pitcher was pitching the perfect game. And it was still early, but like it played out. You were pitching a perfect game. And like, you know, I was the first baseman that dropped the the, the easy throw from the second baseman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but he now, nah, I mean, a, a, a cool learning thing you know piece but um i take full responsibility for it he's not letting me do that because we did really kind of have it but um whatever it is what it is i mean it's um yeah i've, I've only lost a couple nights of sleep over at armin <laughs> did you did you cut him a thousand dollar check you're like i'm so sorry man <laughs> no no I mean, it's funny because like when we walked off the really the funniest part of that which was like 
it's uh, kind of we had to, like the, the the intimacy provided like a lot of fun uh, moments with other coaches or like athletes, and you know one of the funnest parts of the weekend was like sort of the interaction with Jeff Adler and his girlfriend coach, because they're like. I don't know. I, I work with some of the best Canadians and they're great friends, but like Canadians just have like a sense of humor and a twit, and, you know, you know, a wit about them that like nobody really can match in the world. Oh, yeah. and, and they brought that to the games this year. And uh, that moment was really funny because like Matt celebrated <clears throat> and he in his mind had won on the floor and he kind of came over and I'm like, oh, God. Like that did not happen. Um, and, and then we're walking over and she was going to make sure he knew. Right. And I'm like, yeah, oh, I, I saw is... that on the stream. She ran over with her notebook. Car Carl was like, take a look at this, Matt, because you didn't win. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, I think his response kind of was like, uh, fine, fine. Like, you know, she, you know, in the moment, I don't even think he knew like what she was with. Like she wanted to make sure he knew. And he was like, I'm good, like, congrats, like, that's cool. And, and like, she was just like making sure he knew. And it's like, I know, you've told, you know, it was like, <laughs> we had a couple of funny moments. Like there was a moment in the bike rope climb workout, which Matt was pacing. He didn't even realize Jeff had caught up to him, but Carolyn was just like every round, like he's gonna catch him. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Like I'm trying to help like do a Matt splits. I'm trying to help him. And then it was, I was like, Finally, I was like, I, I got to get in the game a little here. Like, she, he can catch him. And I'm like, oh, watch this. I'm like, and, and, you know, Matt hits the higher gear and blows by. We had a blast, honestly. It was in all in good fun. Like, totally. I've talked to them after. Like, they've been, we built a lot of, I think, what are lasting friendships there. It was such a cool, intimate, like, privileged environment to be a part of because of the small group that everybody kind of just was like, let's have fun. We'll kick each other's ass on the floor. And you know, enjoy our time with each other off. What was it? What was the vibe out there? I mean, you know, the, the, it was very unique games. I doubt they'll ever have anything like that again uh, with how small the crew was and how small the field of competitors were. And everyone kind of just had their one plus one. You know, what, what was that like out there? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, going in, it was obviously it was super stressful because you didn't want to get COVID. Nobody does. But like for that particularly, it was like, we we're like wrapping ourselves in bubble wrap to like get to the finish line, particularly the athletes, you know, the stress the week leading up was like, I've never been a part of with Matt, you know, it was, um, and it was not like, I mean, it was just tension on let's take this test. Let's get in this bubble so that we can then have fun. And then it was like immediately a blast And, and the environment was great because, um, I mean, you have to remember like the CrossFit games, like 1200 volunteers, you know, 15,000 spectators a day, um, you know, a hundred partners and vendors all, you know, and exhibitors. There's a lot of shit going on, which, you know, I know from Wadapalooza creates a certain amount of awareness. And then you take that to tension and stress um, at the top, which filters down, right? So it's like one of those things where it's like, I think, you know, it was after year one of Wazo was the thing I came most hyper aware of. It's like how I act is how everybody else might act. But it's stressful, man. Like, and so you've got all these moving pieces. You want it to be perfect. What I'm getting to is the environment was super cool, calm, and, and loose with the, the staff, right? Dave wasn't stressed. I mean, there was certainly a lot of broadcast stuff that brings stress. I don't know what was going on with that, but, but those guys were great. Like, everybody was just kind of loose because it was like, hey, we got a heat. Like, let's go do the heat. And, hey, how you been? You know, um, they were, it was awesome. And um, it was, you know, and again, I think what was coolest is like when you were, I think you've, you felt like you were like qualified for the Olympics. It was at that level of feeling. It was like, you know, there is five and five and like, this is never probably going to happen again. And, you know, the venue was perfect being, you know, the portion of the venue of being at the ranch. I didn't know sort of how that would go, especially with like how the last year has gone. Dave was very welcoming. He was um, very sentimental about it being there. He kept, you know, articulating to coaches and athletes, like, this is going to be the coolest games ever. Like, really soaked this in. Um, and really, honestly, it was. It was like, you know, I don't know what it looked like from the outside, but it was super fun and interesting for us. And, like, even that last workout, it's like, you know, this, the, the, the celebration lap, it was like, you know, you know, Shane and I are kind of sitting there like, 
this will be a historic moment, you know, I, certainly with Matt and T across the line, but historic in that, like, there's like maybe a hundred of us here. And, you know, when this 50 years deep of history and CrossFit, it would be, will be the old guys, like with the walkers, like, Oh wow. The, you know, as they die off, like those are two of the last people that were there, you know, it's that, it was that cool. It really was. It was, I felt really, you know, honored to be at a, you know, a small event like that, that meant so much to the world, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you know, Matt and, you know, Tia, you know, that entire crew uh, very well. So, you know, that they're, they're killers when it comes to their mindset in these, these competitions, but there, that has to sneak in a little bit, especially going into that last event, knowing it's only a hundred points, knowing that they're going to be just fine. Like they're, they're not, they're not going to have any issues meeting the minimum work requirement. Like what went into their decision to, to just run it together? I think it was probably the easiest decision in both of their careers, which seems externally like, ah, oh, you know, you're not going to compete like your competitors. It, you know, they had gotten where they wanted to get, which was, you know, they had won. They had to certainly, you know, apply energy to finishing it, you know, which was, you know, the requirement. And, you know, them, there, there wasn't anything more natural in that moment for them to look at each other and, and, say defiantly we're going to finish this together and matt was like most defiant in that like hey t like i'm waiting if like i get ahead you know i think his assumption was like you know in those in those type of workouts funny enough the females did better than the males um mm -hmm. but he was like hey I, i'm i think he felt like i'd probably win this workout overall uh, or be close like i'll wait you know and and they talked along the way like it was um it was it was like a, a ball of, of of emotion for from the announcement to like them saying hey you've got to finish or you don't podium and then matt kind of figuring out like hey what if i get hurt guys and they're like ah oh, dude like they were great about that they're like listen don't stress about that if you get hurt we're, we're just looking for effort and you know matt's perspective on that always is like well don't make me do things and i'll give more effort because if i have to then i gotta be careful you know but they um yeah like you know i think you know, and you saw like them push a little on the run. And, you know, I think that, I think that was important because it was, you know, and Matt talked to T, he was like, Hey, I won't push if, if you don't want me to. Um, because I am not finishing with anybody but you. So that was like super, in there. You know, that was their intent. But I think Matt, it sort of dawned on Matt, like, I gotta like, I, my results in this workout could affect, you know, a, a, a lot of other people's results like I got to put some effort in this isn't like anti Noah pro Justin like he doesn't even know what's going on he just knows right. that a lot of people are screaming at a lot of people to move and beat Matt and he's like I gotta go um but yeah dude like they were 100 percent we you know it's funny to feel like be behind the scenes and Shane and I kind of be like well this is exactly what they should do like this is awesome but also being like it's a competition. Are they going to be pissed that they're like, you know, lollygagging? You know, we don't even know, like, are they going to finish last male and last female because they go so slow? And then the way it played out with Matt winning, it was kind of like, okay. I mean, you can't really argue with it because Matt won the workout, you know, and Tia very well could have been right in the mix on the female side. She finished third. It wasn't like, you know, a poor effort by any stretch, you know. Yeah. That was cool though. I mean, I don't know how you felt about it, but it was, um, I mean, that was, yeah, that was one of my favorite moments. That was definitely one of my favorite moments. Watching them cross the finish line together is like something that I will remember for a very long time because it, it, it is kind of, uh, you know, capstone for, um, you know, two people who are the, like the best who've ever done it. Like no doubt about that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. They are. They, they, absolutely. Like, that's the next photo that'll be right here. It's just those two with their arms up. Honestly, it will be the most iconic photo ever in our sport because you know that they're not going to allow that to happen again. Like, no, I mean, no way. In, in, I don't think I, you know, I think the intent was like, oh, let's put them next to each other and see if they go at it. That was not going to happen. But then it's like, okay, you know, Dave's not going to let that happen. You know, you're right. going to separate them. Like, he's not going to want that, and, and, which is fine, you know? Yeah, uh, and but, even if even if it were, the context would never be the same. You know, two people going for, you know, fifth and fourth. You know, they, right. they already have a great relationship because they've been training together for the past couple of years, like, every day. Like, 
it's it's never going to happen again in terms of having that same context. It was it's kind of you know wrapping a bow on that though. It was like that was like it was just super surreal because I think everybody has their like opinion and like emotion that they'll throw surrounding them doing that across. Like it's a sports moment. Great. A lot of people can look at it and be like, wow, that's pretty cool. You know what Shane, myself, Sammy, like our group will look at when we see that is just like, there's a lot that goes into that, you know, how close they are, you know, it's a lot to train with someone else in, you know, a lot for Tia. And then the same for Matt, like you're not at your best every day. And, you know, what's important to you some days isn't important to someone else. And, you know, you're, you know, you got your ass on fire some days and the other person's really happy, you know, they poke each other. So it's a long 365 days. And then, you know, um, Shane and all the hard work he put in and just what they put themselves through in general. But, you know, we all, there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears that go into that. And for them to choose to do that, like we, that was great for me and for Shane and for Sammy. It was like, we felt like they were celebrating all, like what we all do together, you know, and it was, it was, um, yeah, that's what, that'll be the coolest sport moment for me ever. You know, it was like, you know, to be there and then have those two come over and spend some time. It was like, you know, you always want, like, I always wonder, you know, I don't want to plan. This isn't like, you know, plan what you're going to say to Matt when he wins, but it was like, it was like the most natural you did it, you know? And like, you know, just like, you know, I didn't never thought of it, but like that was the moment. It was the build up, you know, and it's like you two are clearly the best ever now. Like there's no debate, right? Like there's nothing we need to talk about anymore. Like it's, you know, the numbers are there, like the eyeball you fit the eyeball test. It's like you did it. And and you know that the both of them were kind of like, nah, we did it. Like it it's such a such a cool moment, you know. I, it won't ever be duplicated, like you said, like, you know. So it's over. Like, thanks, Armin. You know, that was that's it. You know, I'm I'm done. I could like grow long gray hair and retire. And my my good day, my good days are behind me. Yeah, you peaked. That was great. Yeah, I, that was a great moment. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, is Matt retiring? I don't know, honestly. I mean, and by the way, let's put some let's put some like real you know beef behind this. This is the same every year. Everybody's like a lot of people are saying he's done um, because like I'm posting sentimental posts, Matt's reflective in interviews. Right. But um, Matt's process is every year. It's, you know, assessing if he's still having fun. You've heard him say it. Like if I'm still having fun, you know, what, you know, what's, what's the schedule look like? I think he wants to know what the season looks like. And so the, I don't know, doesn't mean like he's thinking about it any more than he did last year or the year before. I personally would tell you if I was measuring it on the scale, he was probably closer to retiring other years than he might be this year from what I see of him from a mentality perspective. It's just an annual assessment that hasn't happened and probably won't for a while, but I don't know, man. Like, honestly, I just want him to be happy. I hope he does whatever the hell he wants to do. Like if he wants to retire, great. If he wants to keep competing, great. Like, and if anybody around him thinks otherwise, I'd be really surprised. Um, I think people would be really bummed if he did because he's like so far ahead. Um, but I, I don't know if you want me to bet, I'd say probably not, you know? Yeah. That, that's my, that's my read of the situation too. I think a lot of people read too much into the types of things that he says during the off season. Not that it's not important to pay attention, but you know, when he's being interviewed after the games are over and he says something like, oh, now's a really good time for Sammy and I to go have like, you know, hard, con like long, emotional, deep, you know, life conversations or whatever words <laughs> right, he used. Right. People are like, oh my God, they're like tearing her, their hair out. He's going to retire. Like, oh my, they're having a baby. They're moving to like Europe. Like who knows? Like everyone's like, what the hell's going on? Like everyone's just coming up with their own like weird reading into the situation. And I'm, and people ask me all the time, which I figure I might as well ask you, like just pass that on to you. It's like, people ask me like, oh man, is, is he going to retire? I'm like, hold on a second. There's like, you know, this guy, right? Like, you know, he's like the single most competitive human being on the planet and he enjoys beating other people a lot. And he's still doing that. So like that weighs the scale in favor of coming oh, back yeah. more than anything else, in my opinion. But yeah, like if I was going to put money on it, I would say he's going to compete next season. Like, well, you know, at, at we, least I'd like to see that. Oh, we all would. And you need to be hyper aware of something you just said, which is like, 
he's very um, cognizant of the gap it will create not being in that environment, which is like, he's a competitive human being. And he knows, like, you know, the second he leaves, you know, the conversation will be like, who's better and all so she, and like, quite frankly, he can control things like that right now. And he is, you know, undoubtedly the most dominant person that's ever played our sport. And he's very far ahead. I don't know, man. I, I It's funny that you say that because like every year Matt says the same thing in his post games interview, which is I'm ready to sit on a dock and like have some real deep life conversations. And for some reason this year, more than ever, people are like, he's retiring. Like every comment about, on mine and his social and Sammy's is like, is he retired? I'm like, where the f is this coming from? Like, I, I, people like, are like projecting, people are projecting their own, um, you know, like expectations of what the story should be. And I think, I think again, people don't understand like Matt, Matt's a private guy. So maybe, maybe people just don't know him that well, but right. he is in my estimation, pretty clear in, where he lies in terms of like figuring out what he wants and then committing to making it happen. So every conversation that I've had with him has always been about, I know what I want. I know how to make it happen. And once I make that decision, it's easy after that. It's like, that's the hard part. The hard part is, is making sure that I'm very clear that this is what I want to do. So it makes sense that he spends quite a bit of time in his like fat mat off season trying to figure out if it's right. still if it's still lighting that fire because when it is lighting that fire we get like the 2020 crossfit games he wins you know 10 or 11 of the 13 events or whatever 10 of the 12 events like yeah it's pretty pretty gnarly like let's let's not get ahead of ourselves here like the guy likes to do this well think about you know i don't know i mean people should really step back especially on the competitive scene and, and analyze that like it's you know he's very aware of you know you know, balance and, you know, but, you know, and, and the imbalance of being in the, in the season too, right? So the balance outside has to be there. Yeah, I mean, he's, um, he, he's incredible. Yeah, it's like funny, there's some marketing that just came out around, you know, those poster boards he did with Iconic? I don't know if you saw them. They just put yeah. out a podcast that he did with him. And there's some really profound statements in there that I think people would understand more even even a deeper into, you know, you know how he's wired, but it's like, he talks about like the short term pain that he experiences all the time. And it's like, you know, and, and trying to like give people life advice, basically like, you know, 45 minutes a day, like make your life suck. And then just the reward of, you know, executing and accomplishing that, you know, the glory, it's far outweighs the pain of you like sitting around and not doing that you know, and like lamenting about how, how shitty you are for not putting in the effort or whatnot. And like, just knowing him, like the daily application of that to his training is just, you know, think about the exhaustion around that. It's like every day, because it's such a deep, dark hole that you're in training. Uh, it's funny enough, he's calling me right now. They, yeah. they um, <laughs> you're probably listening to us. Is this live? <laughs> No, no, this isn't. You know, but this deep, dark you should, hole. You should put them on. You should fucking speakerphone. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second, actually. Funny enough. <laughs> What's up, dude? I'm actually on a podcast. I'm on a podcast with Armin right now. And I just wanted to make sure I told you that, that I'll call you right back. I don't want to blow you off. We've been playing phone tag. All right. All right, I'll call you in a bit. Bye. But he... he um, <laughs> he would he's like it's hard what they do man like that's like you know oh yeah no kidding everything's hard but man you know you're a crossfitter do you want to train like those guys do every day like i don't even want to do what i do now and which i think makes me better at what i do and you better at what you do but like come on man like that's like some dark shit so like he's really good at you know compartmentalizing times a year and like even the day and living in the day which makes me think like everybody needs to calm down a little bit and let them get through the next two months. And then, you know, I think, you know, that's when he then will step into the phase of like, all right, the open's coming. What am I doing? You know, and by the way, like he can do the open with like one arm tied behind his back, depending on like that what the true. expression of it is. But like, I'll give you guys some insider. Matt's won the world of the open and 
had not trained until the open started. So like, and I'm talking like taking a month to two months off prior to the open and his first workout being like Monday on an assault bike and Thursday being the open workout. So like, you know, he's gonna be okay and ready for the open, like even fat. So, you know, we're gonna be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that. That was something that kind of blew my mind when I first when I, first, I was like talking to him about that, and he was like, "Yeah, it really hurt. Like, man, that first workout was really painful. Like, oh man, I'd taken ten weeks off of the training. <laughs> I was like, what? You yeah. what? <laughs> How is that even possible? Like, what? What did you do? He's like, yeah, it was really painful, but uh, yeah, I won. It was not a big deal at all. It's one of those things where it's like, um, you know, the kid like puts his hand over the fire and it was warm and then it's like a little closer and it's hot. He's kind of like every year it's like, there's another week on there. Is that <laughs> the straw that breaks the camel's back. I mean, it's like, nah, I mean, practically he just like has such a big base, but, and I, you know, who knows what this whole thing looks like from a season. I mean, I have some knowledge, but not enough knowledge to talk about it because it changes. And, and I think it'll be, you know, the open obviously will have some significance to the season. So it's just, you know, it'll be a matter of how much, you know, what it means. And so I'm interested to see all that come out soon, hopefully. Um, you know, so that, 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 that could obviously play a role in preparation and, you know, how much you, know, you have to pay attention in, in, what, in February, March when the open is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm like, I'm not really holding my breath for it, but I'm waiting to see what CrossFit, um, it communicates about the new format, the new season format. I saw Morning Chalk Up had an article, Justin published this article that kind of had an informed look based off of people they'd spoken to who were like involved in it. Um, but it, without knowing exactly what it's going to look like. And also, you know, Eric Rose is very, very cautious about COVID. You know, he's made it really clear that if they need to push the open dates further away, they'll do that. If they need to adjust the dates of the games, they'll do that. So. Yeah, it really is all up in the air um, without really knowing exactly what's going on. So I don't know. I, it's, yeah. a COVID, it's a COVID is a really big problem for the Open. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, you know, yeah. It's, um, yeah, I mean, who knows? This vaccine, like, you know, no, people in the United States are being pulled saying they're not going to take it. It's like, dude, like, I think they should lock us all down literally for like six weeks. And then everybody will be like, right, I'll take the vaccine. You know, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to be in my house anymore. <laughs> you, know? Um, uh, you know, like you're you're in you're in the event business. Like you're in that space. Like what what is what is your planning looking like? How are you dealing with you know basically summer? 21 being the earliest things get back to some sort of normal, right. having you know crowds and stuff. Yeah, it's um, it's a great question. It's you know, it's a moving target, as we know. So what we're trying to build is is key dates to make you know hard decisions, you know, and trying to you know <clears throat> work on the tightest timeline we can to to have the goal of you know every event being what it always has meant or would have meant to the market, right? So it's like you know, mass participation events or mass participation events, you know, events that a lot of fans attend, a lot of fans can attend as the goal. And then working back from it, right? And we know that's not super practical this year, even, even you know, in, even later in the year, right? So it's like we have a lot of data that helps us because you know we do a lot of concert work. Uh, we're in, you know, we do hundreds of concerts a year, and that's a grim outlook for 21. You know, there aren't a lot of people planning tours in 21. <clears throat> so basically, to answer it directly, like we've got key dates for all our events that we're gonna, you know build like a four month runway where we can pivot, you know, and then, you know, are we doing it full or are we going to do it digital? Or are we going to have a hybrid where it's like a lot of athletes, but no fans so that, you know, we can serve our community the best we can, you know, and, and all the while the elephant in the room is like, what's going on with Guadalupe because it's the biggest event and the best event, you know, and I, I'll tell you like what we have decided and haven't made like a full decision on, but the, the the first stage of the decision is we're really not going to do that event unless we can do it the way that it always has been. So you're not going to see a digital expression, virtual expression of Waterpalooza this year. You're going to see Waterpalooza or you're not going to see it. And, you know, whether that's later in the year or not, you know, I'm trending towards like, you know, why would we even do this this year? You know, I really want 
to preserve what we've built there for the people that have invested a lot of time in it too. Like I'm a recipient of some of that growth, you know, it's like, so I just, um, that's kind of an outlier event that, you know, I'm working really hard with my team to find a way, but it's like, Hey, do you do it in October and then do it again in January? Like, it's one of those things where we have to, you know, so our decision on that will come probably around the first of the year on that specific event. And then we'll wait, like Granite Games is in June. You know, will it be a part of the season? You know, West Coast Classic is in May. Will it be a part of the season? It was going to be in March. We're probably going to move it to May to be a part of the season if it, if, it, if it can be. Madrid, you know, where does that fit in the ecosystem? So we'll, you know, we'll put these key dates in place to make decisions. So, hey, all those other events, you know, Madrid, West Coast Classic and Granite Games, we're going to find a way to really do something with them and I, I think we'll talk about some of the stuff we're doing now which really is a an opportunity for us to test some really cool software uh, a really cool platform that we think can help us execute and create a really cool user experience on some of these events if we can't get together and do them in person so yeah t tell me tell me about the trials because i saw it pop up like right after the games were up on uh on social media and i was like oh this, this is a cool name like it, it seems like a really it is, interesting. Isn't it? Yeah, it seems like a really interesting vibe. I I'm proud of the team because it's like you know we have a lot going on and and um, you know what we are most is gritty and and um, you know Dylan and you know our crew Kristen and the media side we're just you know looking for ways to be present and serve people that have trusted us and. You know, that's partners, that's athletes, it's volunteers. Like, just how can we get people off the couch and moving? You know, we did it with United in Movement. That was just a gritty, um, you know, delivery from our team and many others as well that just was like, hey, we're going to be resilient right now and show up and give people, you know, a reason to do something. And this is just another extension of that. It's, it's um, we're obviously dealing with what you, you know, asked about COVID in 21. And so that, you know, what stared us in the face is we need to have um, the ability to do things in a m many different ways. And digitally or virtually is like a really um, big um, area that we need to concentrate on to be able to execute these events. So it's undoubtedly some of our events are going to be from people's homes, you know. So how can we do that better or, you know, great in general than what has been done or you know how can we move that along and evolve so we went out you know a, a few months ago and sought out you know someone to help us build software um which is super involved super expensive um and we needed to test it properly so the immediate reaction was well let's do something at the end of the year with the software um and then it's kind of like taking on a life of its own like that D dylan um is you know the you know Dylan and you know Alfonso from Spain and some of the other guys internally cooked up this trials idea, and it's funny when Dylan first sent it to me, I'm like, man, like this thing looks like foreign language to me. Like the trials, it's like, what are you talking about? And in now the more it's been marketed, it's like I really love it. Um, it's a badass name, idea, and concept, which we can get into. But it, it's um, funny. I was at the games when we dropped it. What I'm super most proud of is the reaction. It's like, honestly, it's literally was a platform to do a really good job for those who did it and wanted to be a part of it. But we really needed people to, you know, work through this tech with us, right? And, and, and I literally, like, we dropped that and I'm in the warm up area and, like, all the games athletes, like, Justin Medeiros is like, hey, should I be doing that? And, like, you know, they're all like, getting, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna do that. Like, some of the athletes there, I guarantee you, will probably do it. And they're like, the coaches are all like, hey, man, what's the trials? Like, some people from CrossFit are like, this is cool. What's this trials thing? And I'm like, oh, wow. I, I guess it, you know, that's cool because people are paying attention to us and expect great things from us and are interested in interacting with us. So, yeah, I mean, I'm pumped. It's going to be fun, and a lot of people are signing up. So, And I, I hope you are. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Tell me a little more about it. Sell me yeah. on it, Matt O'Keefe. Yeah, it's – um. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's like what we do anything. It's, you know, for anyone and everyone. So that's the really nice part. There's multi-division, there's 10 divisions, right? Across three regions, you know, the trials are, are uh, segmented to U.S. Spanish trials, U.S. trials, and LATAM trials. 
And, um, you know, there'll be the same workouts, but you're competing regionally. And then, you know, you'll be, you know, a certain number of people will be pushed into a final stage, which isn't another set of workouts, by the way. It's just the same set of workouts. We won't reveal the scores from the top three in each division. We'll bring them into the final and we're going to aggregate a broadcast. We're going to, we're going to put a tape together, a broadcast, which you're going to be able to interact with. I think it's going to be the coolest software that's ever been put out in our space on the broadcast side. You're going to be able to say, I want to watch Armin close and make sure he's getting below parallel and click on him. And so there's going to be all that. So you're going to have nine, essentially nine males and nine females from each of these divisions competing in a final uh, virtually. And they, the best part is like, if I make the final, which isn't going to happen, or you might, um, <laughs> you're not going to know how you stack up with that group. And, you know, you're going to watch it. Play. You're going to be able to interact with it as the person who did the workouts, because you're going to sit here and say like, wow, I don't know who's going to do well in this workout, but I know what I did, but I'm going to watch this and you're going to watch your own performance in a sport and, and be on the edge of your seat. So it's, um, yeah, 10, to, 10 divisions and it's, um, you know, uh, elite. So there'll be an elite component with prize money. Um, and we're looking at how we enhance that money, you know, depending on the crowd that wants to, you know, come and do that and how we can, you know, get more people excited about it and invest in, a, in it from a partnership perspective. So we're really committed to, you know, paying professional athletes to compete that are professional athletes. And then um, we'll have, um, you know, an RX division intermediate uh, and scaled so that, you know, you can pick where you're at. There's all kinds of information on the, on the website that gives you, you know, where you would fit from, you know, minimum standards of things like how you clean and jerk. And, um, and then, there's two teen divisions, you know, 13 and 14 year olds will compete together, 15 to 17 year olds will compete together, male and female on all of this, by the way. And then the old people like me, and I'm not even going to say to you because I don't even know if you're old enough yet, but um, the old people will go 35 to 39, 40 to 44, 45 to 49 and 50 plus. So anybody can do it. And uh, it's six workouts over 10 days. You got to video them and submit them. And um, I don't know get ready for the open too, right? It's a little like test where you're at. When, when is it? Uh, December, first week of December, um, or, you know, is when the actual event it's live now, registration information. Um, and you know, so I think it's, it's, um, you know, I don't know the exact dates. It's the first week of December is the, where the 10 days start. Um, okay. Yeah. It's like December there's, or something like that, I think, is the there's, first thing. There's not a single division that you named that I would be able to, like, make the top in. I'll tell you that right now. Not, not, not the young teenagers, not the oldest of the old. There's not a single division in there that I wouldn't get just, de just demolished by the people who are really good. You know, it's funny. I have a, I have a good friend who's um, a female master's athlete on, in, like, the 55-plus category. And... Um, it's, it's funny, we were talking about all this, but like there is a guy from the gym, she, she's at CrossFit Malibu, super cool girl. She's got a lot to do with sports and entertainment. And, and um, she'll do, she'll, she has some people that I was hanging around with around the games that say like, I do the workouts with her um, around the games at her weight, cause it's, you know, scaled down. And, you know, she's a 55 year old woman and I get my ass kicked. You know, and it's like, I'm using her weight. I'm male and I'm younger. And I get my <laughs> and it's like, it defines my life because of who I'm around all the time. But like Ben and I were talking about this yesterday. Like I go, you know, once a week or once every other week and work out with Catherine and I use her barbell weight, you know, and, you know, her assault bike calories or, you know, you know, whatever the scale is. And I get my ass handed to me. And like, dude, I'm, I'm not like, a slouch when it comes to fitness like I can get myself around a gym uh especially at a woman's weight and so it's just like you're right like dude your days have passed so <laughs> all of us <laughs> yeah I actually but I still want you to do this we're gonna build a leaderboard for you Lil Franco Tommy Marquez <laughs> I'll do half of one of the workouts and just you, peace out and let you in yeah. we're gonna call we can't it see it the washed yeah. up division, 11 divisions. 
<laughs> I have that actually. Your days are past. Actually, is written on the wall right there. I see it every every. I sit down at my desk and it's right there. Your days are past. <laughs> you need that. That's the reminder I need when I walk into my garage to do a workout so that I don't do anything stupid. It's funny. I got rhabdo, by the way. I don't. Do you? Did I tell you about? This? I did not know that. How did you manage that? I like really bad. You know, rhabdo's bad anyway. But like, I I did some damage. Um. So stage one of the games. Um. Sunday, it was like dehydrated. Sunday you did not do any. Yeah. So this is a really <laughs> funny. This is a really funny story. So, like, ha, you know, dehydrated, no sleep. You know, I was in Cookville. Like, Heber and Marston are there, and all weekend he was like, "We're doing that workout together." And I, by the way, like, I'm telling you right now, in my like proper form. I would like do really well with that workout. Not at 275, but we would we'd use the woman's weight. I like I can move the needle on that workout. I'm good at GHDs, but this is like and I do them occasionally. Well, anyway, I literally got through the I'm I basically get home to Matt's house after we're from the gym, and I'm like I'm starting. I'm not waiting for Hero. Like I'll be here all day. Those guys are all, all over the place. So I'm doing it in the garage and Matt's like videoing me, putting it on a social. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, dude, I know. He's like, you're an idiot. And I was like, <laughs> I need to work out. He ever wants to do this against me. I'm going to do it. He can do it after. Well, they showed up at the garage with the cameras. It's on a Buttery Bros episode. And I'm like in my the 30s. And I'm literally now, if they weren't there, I would have quit. And I, mean, <laughs> I don't quit workouts because I'm like, I know what you feel like when you're like in trouble. And I'm now like, you know, every GHD is like a PR. And I'm like, shit, this is a really weird because I can do them at high volume. And I'm like, now I'm thinking like, I know Guido Trinidad's had um, uh, Rabdo from GHD Annie. I'm like, I'm screwed. And, you know, the male ego just kind of like exists and doesn't allow me to think properly. He was taunting me. I'm going to kick your ass. I'm like, all right, I got to finish. Fine the next day, fly home. I get on my couch and I'm like, that night, I'm like, it's coming. Like, I'm going to be really sore. Dude, I have never been in a position that I was in with this. In my, like, people joke about, like, us in CrossFit joke about rhabdo. Like, oh, I got rhabdo. No. Okay. I'm talking, my urine was black. Like, not brown, not like a hint of Coca-Cola color. I'm talking like, like this color black. Like, you couldn't see through it. And I was on the couch, and if, if, like, if I, like, breathed the wrong way, I was, like, tears were coming down my cheek. Like, I'm, Did you go to the hospital? So, you know, stage two of not bright behavior, no. But, and I'm going to tell you, I, I'm going to tell you why. Like, I, I mean, I'm not an expert in this, but I've had a number of friends have it. So I'm texting them, and I'm like, as it hurts as I text, I'm like, dude, what are they going to do to me if I go to the hospital? well, you're really fucked, so you're probably going to be there 10 days. And they're just going to pump a, a liter in you every hour. Yeah, they're going to give you IV. Yeah. They're like, hey, I'm not medical advice, but like, why don't you take a day of pumping a lot of fluids into yourself and see if there's improvement? And there really was like nominal. It was still a shitty three days, um, like really bad. And then what I, dude, like literally, I'm still messed up. So, like, I literally tried to do toes to bar in California in a workout with Shane. And I was like, hey, dude, like, I'm going to have to scale. And, like, I can't even do V-ups. Like, I'm going to have to do, like, something much different. I did some serious damage, um, like, really bad. So, don't get rhabdo, kids. Yeah, um, that's a good story. Where was I going with this, by the way? Uh, I, can't, I think you were talking about – I don't even remember. We were talking about competing. That's what we were talking We were talking about, like, actually throwing down – in workouts and then uh you, you mentioned that you got rhabdo so my you. days are over yeah so now i need to remind myself when i go in the garage even more so oh and the reason it came up is chad was yet that's where i was going chad was yesterday and it was like did I you do that a message to someone like are you doing this someone in the know that does this every year you know you know under i'm like hey i had rhabdo six weeks ago and like the immediate response was don't do it you know, and it was, I was like, cool, I don't need, yeah, so I'm in a bad place right now, I mean, we're doing a lot of skier, we're doing a lot of rowing, dude, I couldn't even row, like, literally my first workout back three weeks, I took two full weeks off, I couldn't sit back and pull a rower. Yeah, yeah, that's, you that's, had I, 
I have, yeah. I got rhabdo uh, pretty bad in 2013. It was at a competition, actually the first event of a competition. It was a, a workout. The workout was like, it was like a, a few miles of running overall, but it was uh, various weights. So like, it was kind of like the, the ruck event from the 2019 games where it increases weight as you go along. So you start off, it's like a regular run with no weight and then like one sandbag for the next lap and then two sandbags for the lap after that. Um, and so it ended up being like 30 or 40 minutes with quite a bit of time under tension. <clears throat> and that for some reason was just a little too much for me to handle. And then I went through the rest of the competition and it took me four or five months before I felt normal again. Like I was, I, my heart, like I, I would do a power clean at like 135 and my heart rate would just skyrocket. And I was like, okay, things are not normal anymore. Uh, it took me a, little, a while to get, yeah, it took me a while to get normal again. It's funny. Like I, um, I, I, I had that moment in California where like I, I was like warming up toes of bar and I'm like, I can't, I can't do them. Like, I'm not, like, people don't understand. Like, this is like when you go in and learn toes of bar, and, like, you can't get your feet above your head. Like, I, and I can do them, like, for sets, like you can in workouts. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't even get my feet, like, above my eyes. And I was like, oh, my God, it's over. Like, I'm just going to be, like, a, a mush ball the rest of my life. I'm like, I don't have, at the moment I was defeated. I told Shane, too. And I was like, I'm defeated. He's like, dude, you just need to rehab. I'll write something for you. And I'm like, I'm done, man. I, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna, <laughs> ro I'm gonna row slow and I'm gonna bike slow. I'm, I'm like, I'm, my ship has sailed. And so, so we, we're all, we're over that. I feel, I don't feel bad for myself anymore. I've been doing some rehab. It's actually helped a lot. Um, I did some toes to bar yesterday, um, and there's like an, a, a, a big improvement from like three weeks ago just on doing some like the ups and, and stuff. But dude, I can't relate more with you. Like I feel like I've done damage, which will take probably about four or five months to recover from. You know? Yeah, it was, it was really, it was, it was, a, it was a frustrating, it was a frustrating time. It was a frustrating time because it happened right before the open. And I was like, I was just completely screwed during the open, which, you know, I'm just going to use that as my excuse as to why I didn't do oh, that. Oh, me year. too. I already did this, by the way. I have a good friend, Billy Rogers. He's like, always challenges me every year in the open. And I'm like, Ah oh, man, I, I'm out this year. Like I got, I got a rap though. He's like, dude, stop it. You had that. Like, I'm like, no, really. You don't understand. Yeah, I would say, like, honestly, like, public service announcement. It's funny. Like, and by the way, people can look at the stupidity of that workout, and you know, people have had fun with me. But from my set of like how I train and what I'm good at and what I've experienced in my CrossFit life, that isn't a, a really dumb approach. It was, in hindsight, what I've learned is you can get rhabdo if you're Matt Fraser, if you're dehydrated, stressed, haven't slept, doing some Fran. Like, you can really do damage. To, so you just, like, got to be – like, I learned a lot through that. Being yeah, mindful. the context is important. Yeah, the context is really important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the last thing I wanted you mentioned you 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 sort of talking to to Shane and Shane wrote you he's like I'll write you I'll write you a program I'll write you workouts don't worry that that puts you into a very elite group of people Keith you have <laughs> having Shane write workouts for you makes you like you know uh, two two of the people like two thirds of the people almost one hundred percent of the people that he's wrote, written workouts for have won multiple CrossFit Games championships so. You know, you're well, in a dude, when he good. said that my biceps came back. It was really interesting. <laughs> yeah, you know it's funny. I've never thought yeah, of it that way. Yeah. He he's um you know what's fun? Like I I've I've spoken a little to this recently. It's a good thing to close on. It's like the entry of Shane Orr into like all of our lives has probably been one of the most beautiful moments in my my CrossFit career. Um because he's like, you know, he's the most humble, hardworking you know, human, like I said something in a post the other day where it was like, he never takes credit. Like he deflects and it's my job and his job. And by the way, we feel that way. It's like, those guys do the hard work. Like, I don't like go talk to them. Right. And it's, it's, um, but he is like under no, he's unknown a little bit and he's very apprehensive to do interviews and things like that. But that man is, you know, he's my man crush. Like he just like, he cares. Like genuinely why I'm saying, like I'm saying that off the cuff, he 
he checks in on me. Like he like, I'll get a FaceTime from him, a text. He cares for me, you know, and like he's taking me into that. I'm not going to win the CrossFit Games, okay? And I might, I might not even do the Open, but he cares for the two fittest people in history, and he cares for me. So I'm, a, I'm now a client of his that, you know, we'll see what the progression looks like over the next 12 months. He's, he's screwed. I'm going to really damage his brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, unless you're snatching 300 pounds by the end of the next year, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to be, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what's going to, he's going to hand you like the, he's going to hand you the programming on like a sheet of paper and you're going to immediately like, I got this. I'm so good. We were so he's going to be really upset that I said that he's helping me because I'm going to tell his brand. Um, but yeah, no, he's, um, I work out with him quite a bit. He's super fun. Like we, um, we always get like really fit around the games yearly because it's, you know, a time that, you can, you know, watch them train. We were there to emotionally support as much as possible, and we jump in, you know. So uh, he's, we have a lot of fun working out together. He's in the, the same mode as I am in life. It's like as many machines as possible, as light as possible, just like fit for life. He's one fit dude, though. Like, dude, it, I, I'm wearing the sneaky fit, but Shane is ridiculously fit. He's, he's the epitome, he's, epitome of sneaky fit. Like, I will tell you something right now. Shane Orr could be a competitive CrossFit athlete. Like, you know, not maybe a games athlete, but I wouldn't put anything past him if he put his mind to it. Nobody in this world has seen him with his shirt off. I have, you know, because in a small circle, he'll take it off in a workout. The man is Adonis. Like, it's, <laughs> and, and he'll randomly, like, you know, we'll pick weights for workouts and it'll be like, you know, this is the stimulus I'm looking for. And I'm like, yeah, get a 50 pound dumbbell. And he's like, oh, I was going to use a hundred. And I'm like, dude, shut up and get a 50. And you know, he's, he just, he is, um, he's, he's yeah. smart. Like it's, it's, it's it, you know, Ben's like that too, right? Like those guys are real, like people don't realize that, that those guys are really fit and they practice what they preach a lot of ways. And they, they do it to like tinker um with how and they what what i think i'm good at too and like he's good at is like i can do a workout and then know what and he can better than anyone and know what that should look like for matt or tia so he uses that a lot to help gauge like a day of volume or like a workout like hey that should be this weight for matt because it was 185 for me it should be 250 for him like whatever it might be you know yeah he's crazy cool you need to get him on and open him up I think you need to like open that can. Dude, for sure. The last time I was out there uh, and I got a chance to like, I put the camera in his face for like five minutes and Tia was laughing so hard. She could not stop like from how nervous he got and how like sort of, because he doesn't want to talk about himself, right? It's like she was like in the back giggling the entire time as he was like, awkwardly holding a drill that he found in the gym and he was just kind of it was so funny and Shane is such he's the the idea of like deflecting is 100% accurate like he will take no credit even though he probably has one of the most stressful jobs in the entire space because yes. it's his it's like his brainchild that is developing these athletes like you know taking the best and making them better isn't easy so you know Shane's Shane is it's yeah. a losing proposition. Like, honestly, oh, sure. his work with Matt is the most risky proposition in the history of our sport. Like, hey, let's take on a guy that's won the last two CrossFit games. You know, let's program for him. That's – and by the way, like, you know, behind the scenes, it's like constantly like, I hope I'm doing enough. Talking to me, others, like just, how's he feeling? I'm learning him. Yeah, he's badass. Like, it's so funny to see him freeze with a camera because truly – what he's worried about is like somebody's gonna give me commend me and I don't wanna hear it. Like it's you know, I just wanna work on that side. If you wanna ask me like how I feel about something, great. I'm not gonna take credit for what those guys do, which is super cool. He's like, what a genuine, humble, like I'm, I can't say enough, I don't have enough good superlative words for him. He's I'm very fortunate, and anybody who gets a chance to interact with him, he'll engage you one on one. Do it. He's a phenomenal human being. He really is. Special guy. Now I can't wait to just see his abs one day. I'm just going to – every Instagram post from now on, show me your abs. 
Give me like an Instagram handle. Find Shane's abs. It's like Shane's abs. I will tell you right now, they look about as good as anybody's you've ever seen in the in your entire life. <laughs> Maybe not today. He is now eating his way through the United States. So good. Um, but you know, for some reason, I feel like Shane probably has the superpower to maintain his abs. I've seen that man put down some. That can that man can eat. He's in. He I've seen him put down. You know, ten donuts in a, in a couple of hours. Like he can. He's getting after it right now. So good man. Listen, good. Well, he's earned he, it. Yeah, he has. So yeah, he's great. Matt, thanks so much, man. It's great talking to you. It's always good to catch up. There's too much time between our, you know our, our conversations. We need to do this more often. Thank you. Thanks for all your coverage and you know everything you do for the space. Hopefully we have more exciting stuff for you to talk about soon. Um, hopefully you know, with the sport and get you know, Wadapalooza back online so you can come down and, and poke around and have fun. But, you know, what, COVID's, not, COVID's not being very nice to us right now, but we'll get no, it. No, it's not. No, it's not. But uh, where, uh, where, where can people follow along with Wadapalooza or the trials or, or what's the best place to find all that info? Stay engaged with our social handles. You know, Wadapalooza, West Coast Classic, Madrid, um, we'll, you know, Loud and Live Sports, we'll use those platforms. We're not creating a unique platform and they'll direct you where you need for registration, um, for, you know, uh, workout announcements and all that. So we'll use those handles to, to keep people informed and celebrate, you know, what's going on with that. So that's the best place for people, um, you know, you know, follow those handles and, and you'll get all your information you need. But register, it's fun. It's like for everyone. And, um, you know, it'll be good. It's, you know, something to train for for the next few weeks. And I'll do it. You know, Armin's going to do it. He just committed. So we're going to send Absolutely. him. Absolutely. So, but yeah, no, it should be fun. Thank you. Thank you, man. It's great talking to you.